my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. All good things come to those who wait. I have no patience. I have been waiting and I am ready to watch Watcher. Watcher is a 2022 drama horror thriller that's been playing in some countries' theaters for the last month. The film, led by Micah Monroe, follows a young American woman that moves with her husband to Bucharest, the capital of Romania. In this dark, new, mysterious city, she begins to suspect that a stranger is watching her from her apartment. As I said, this film has been out in cinemas for the past month, and lucky for me, it is dropping on VOD today, which means you can watch it digitally, renting it from your preferred VOD provider. It's not on any streaming networks as of now. The film is Chloe Ukino's first feature. I'm sorry, Chloe. I really hope I pronounced your name right. I did look it up and I could not find it anywhere. But Chloe did a segment on the recent VHS film, VHS 94. And it's really interesting, the stylization differences from what I know in this film. This film has been referred to as a psychological thriller horror, but most interesting, intriguing, and promising, a lot of people refer to Watcher as a Hitchcock-esque film. I'm a Hitchcock fan, I mean, who isn't? So I'm very excited to dive into this kind of slow burn, thriller-esque psychological nightmare. What I also find very interesting about the setup for this film being in an apartment building, high up, and of course looking at a window. I'm assuming this is where people connect Hitchcock with the rear window type situation. But also we have seen a flood of these types of movies, woman in the window, woman in the window across the street from the... <laughs> Look, I cannot never remember that title. You know the one I'm talking about, the one that makes fun of these kinds of films. So I've seen a couple of these films that have tried to mimic this kind of Hitchcock feel, whether this just be ironic, making fun of this kind of subgenre plot point. Um, and then we've also seen a lot of films trying to do it very seriously, Girl on the Train, all that good stuff. But I have a feeling this one has a little bit of a different feel to those ones, this one being set in a foreign country. And I did hear that this one was six years in the making. So I'm very excited to see what Chloe has in store for us. I love a good psychological thriller. And you all at home voted a chill with me type review. So let's go and watch Watcher. I've been waiting way too long. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> hi friends, I just finished watching Watcher. I wanna say The Watcher so bad, Watcher. And it was actually a little bit different than what I expected, which is so funny because Hitchcock, saying it's like a Hitchcock-esque type vibe feel movie, hits it bang on, but I didn't think it was gonna be that bang on. So the film does follow the exact plot that we discussed. It is about a woman who moves to Bucharest with her husband, and her husband can speak Romanian, but she can't. So there's definitely an element of lost in translation, a bit locked out and secluded from everyone she knows, and she can't really talk to people or not all people speak English. Here she discovers someone across the way watching her through her apartment and from there, the feeling of isolation grows, and so do the suspicions of who she thinks he really is. The movie is very slow paced, way slower than I anticipated. It's simple, but it's focused, it's concise, and there's, I mean, it's very subtle and not in your face, which I think a lot of films this year we've found with horror go really hard on um, the scares, the layers, um, and any symbolism. And this one, it doesn't really have that. It really strips everything back to a basic kind of tension following one lead character kind of plot. It's a very simple film that takes itself very seriously as well. And in doing so, it has this really interesting effect where we kind of go back to these older style classic films where it feels like they are actually in danger and it feels a little bit more realistic. It feels like sometimes we're so desensitized to horror and all of these 
horrendous things that can happen to someone when someone is murdered in these movies that we're so used to seeing them murdered in really disgusting ways that the fear of actually losing their life like that fear just goes because it's always what is the worst thing that can happen to someone and although there is a lot that ties into her fears with what's going on in the city at that time and it is quite disgusting and scary. It does still strip back to this basic fear of just being scared and vulnerable and I hate that it's like having no one believe you because of her going through this kind of thing alone and being alone in this apartment while her husband is at work, her not being able to speak the language. It does go back to those kind of stereotypical movies. I really, Rosemary's Baby comes a lot to mind where it's the person who's stuck by themselves. And I mean, Rosemary's Baby, obviously she has some neighbors, um, some really nosy neighbors, but you know, that isolation and whether it's all in your head or not. Um, but the film does it in a very simple way. Just the simple fear of someone watching you is enough. We're so used to all of these in-depth layers of where this fear comes from and the trauma, where this one just focuses on just a really straightforward look at that. The film isn't only quiet and simple in structure, it's also quiet and simple in set design and um, in sound. So it is, as I said, it's a more realistic approach, um, but it just really, because it is so subtle and maybe like so much more quiet than these epic films that really want to pull out all the stops as horror fans we're used to seeing people you know chainsawed in half all that good stuff films like texas chainsaw just come to mind with the whole gritty set design everything is over the top um this film it takes place in the city and although she does explore a lot of it. A lot of the scenes are within apartments and it's just a quiet scene between two people. So it's not a loud, flashy film by any means. And I think that's what really gives it its classic feel. Even the title sequence, it's just like an exterior shot of the window in their apartment when they move in. It's such a beautiful shot and it's really effective in setting up the film and letting you know that this is just gonna be a straightforward you know, old school thriller. The font feels a little bit retro and then it even comes up with Watcher in Rosemary's Baby font. But I think that Rosemary's Baby is a little bit over the top compared to this one because it is a really slow ass film. And when people told me that, I did not think it was gonna be as slow as it is. So there was something really interesting in that silence and also just interesting in a film that is so modern in architecture and um, interior design, uh, having those classic kind of feels where it doesn't have to be so flashy and over the top. And we do also see this in the set, as I said, the interior decoration, but also the colors that they use. It's not vibrant, it's not really contrasted, it's not over the top. Um, and there are just as many scenes during broad daylight. A lot of people freak out that I watch these movies during the day, um, but it is just as bright as it is dark, even though it's called The Watcher, and I'm sure a lot of the trailer, if you've seen it, um, even the poster, it's during the night, and you assume you know it's about someone watching someone through the window at night, but a lot of this happens during the day and even a lot of the tense kind of chasey scenes where she feels watched happen during the day. One thing I also really like about this film, holding back on reveals, uh, it was really interesting to see it just through her perspective and you weren't kind of jumping from character to character where I feel like in a lot of horror movies, they're, they're really keen to tell a different perspective um, and jump around a little bit more. So I really enjoyed that. You really do feel stuck with the lead character. I would love to know if anyone watches this who is Romanian <laughs> and if it was a completely different experience to you. Uh, a lot of the film and the feel of the film and being isolated with the lead character and her perspective is because she cannot speak the language and she's trying to learn it, but you're just as kind of, even when she's trying to say things, you still kind of understand when she's trying to order a coffee or whatever. As an audience member, you're meant to feel that, you know, lost in translation. <laughs> Probably not the best example, but she is really secluded and isolated. Um, you don't actually see her really communicate with her family back home or anything like that. You don't know really anything about that situation. You just feel kind of stuck in this new location with her um, trying to navigate. And she really does try and do her best. She's a very optimistic woman. <laughs> um, it's very interesting. But if you don't speak Romanian and you watch this film, you feel that isolation and it, it really works well. It's a very subtle, slow, 
quiet film that doesn't rely on anything flashy and it's just really refreshing to see that um, in 2022. It's really easy to be swept up by special effects and creative characters and really layered stories so this was a nice kind of look at what actually makes things scary. But I would say that the film isn't all simple. There are some subtleties in there and some questions I ask. I don't really want to say too many because I don't want to give away anything, but there are some moments that are quite interesting with the dialogue. At one point she has a conversation with this neighbor that she gets to know about whether it's just best not to know. And that's actually the safest thing is to not know whether you're right or not. Just a lot of really interesting lines brought to light um, and because the film is so silent you have a lot of time to kind of digest that and try and figure out what they're trying to say by it. Overall I really enjoyed this. It was a nice pleasant easy watch um, and something that makes you really think about what actually scares you and goes back to basics in terms of being really focused on a storyline and trying to get under your skin and also it kind of cleanses your horror palette with how desensitized we are to everything, bringing it back to the original, being scared of the unknown. I give this one a personal score of seven out of 10. I do think it's worth the rental. Um, and if you have a partner, a friend, family in your house that aren't really into horror, this is definitely one you can kind of trick them into because it's like a very soft thriller. Just make sure that they know it's a slow burn if they're into that because it is very slow. And I don't want to get you in trouble, but you know, if someone you know is into kind of slower films or if you know someone who's into more Hitchcock kind of thrillers, this would be a great gateway film to get them to watch some more modern horror movies with you. For originality, I'd probably give it like a, a four. I'm going to be real. And for scare, I'm going to give it a 4-2. There is a shocking moment in it, um, but the scare, as I said at the very start, it's all very psychological. It's a very psychological film and it will work for some people, but not everybody. I also want to say that I did not know before watching this that Carl Glusman was in it and that's the husband. He is Murphy from Love, one of my favorite movies, Gaspar Noé. I love that film and yeah, it was really exciting to see him in that. It was a nice surprise. Anyway, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Have you seen Watcher? Let me know down below if you liked it, if you didn't, what you did like about it, what you didn't, all that good stuff. I love hearing all of the opinions, whether it's negative or positive. I hope you're having a fantastic day and if you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you here. We're gonna watch the black phone next and I'm very excited for that. So subscribe subscribe and um, if you liked it give it a thumbs up and I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends.